Toronto's raised highway does its job above, but it's terrible below. Cities around the world have struggled with this question. What to do with the space under an elevated expressway? Soon, all of this is going to change. The Under Gardener project aims not to just disrupt the city, but disrupt the entire idea of urban revitalization. We think this will be open heart surgery. There has been this major artery that has been blocked with cholesterol, and we're opening it. My name is Ken Greenberg. I'm an urban designer. I'm working with Public Work. We are working on the Under Gardener project. If these sorts of elevated highways are such a blight on cities, why were they built in the first place? After World War II, North Americans just fell in love passionately and indiscriminately with the car. We ended up with these relics, like the Gardner Expressway. They were separating people, and while they were providing one function, the collateral damage was incredible. You've got this vacant strip that's been left uh, forlorn and feeling dirty and unwelcoming. That's blocked the city from the lakeshore as well, so it really has had this negative impact on the city. How would you describe these spaces under the highway? What are they? What are these little areas? The spaces under the highway are structured by a series of bents. And these bents actually form 55 rooms. Walk us through what we'll see as this thing unfolds. I'm going to try and paint a picture of it. Think of it as a linear progression of rooms. Let's start off at Strawn. We want to cascade off of Strawn Avenue a kind of stepped profile which can work for performance areas. Really exciting things can happen in terms of performances. As you move east is the Armory. People are thinking of that as a great cultural venue. So now we're continuing east and we come to the new Fort York Visitor Center, which is a beautiful structure. Fort York is there. Here, you have a better perspective in on the, the Visitor Center. One of the notions is that as you go over Fort York Boulevard, this long, beautiful wooden bench where you would have a perspective view over the fort, oh, over the, yeah. which you can't get anywhere else. You can never get high enough yeah. to get that. So we actually see this as a place where people might perch Then you move over to a beautiful pedestrian cycle bridge over Fort York Boulevard. You'll have food shopping, cafes, outdoor markets. You come down to the music garden, Bathurst Key. So it's amazing. Here's, really here's the new bridge. Like it's so wide open. This is an amazing project. I mean, this, it's underused space. It's hidden space. It's a a very aggressive program. What are the obstacles in front of them trying to pull this off? Basically, people's perception of it as a polluted, dirty area is going to be the main thing they're going to have to overcome. People think of it as fast-moving cars moving and air quality is dramatically reduced in that area. In reality, exhaust does float upwards and out, so the air quality below the gardener is probably cleaner than what is above. They're going to have to figure out a way to program the park so that people will be returning to the space time and again and understand its many functions. It's incredibly ambitious and aggressive. When will you know if it's working? Obviously, the first challenge is to get it built. But then the next real challenges will be in the first year or two of programming to see how it takes, to see how this open heart surgery actually starts to work. We 
think of it as a giant R&D lab for the city and it will be a space that will be programmed. So we're gonna look for a great artistic director or curator. It will actually be a place where we play back to Toronto, the city that we're becoming. We're surrounded by these drawings and the possibilities of what this thing could be. To you, what's the one thing that you're most excited about? Part of its disruptive nature is it's not quite obvious what to call it. It is not a park. It's something different. In this amazingly heterogeneous city that we inhabit, what is extraordinarily important is common ground, where all of us who are so different actually rub elbows where we see each other, not through the windshields of cars, but on foot, doing things together. This is a project that is challenging the norm, and that is when design starts to have impact and people start to believe in design. It's a multi-step process, trying to figure out the language to catch up with the idea. I can describe it as a living room, as a porch. People are gonna come up with all these names. But the main thing is it's not one single thing. It disrupts a whole set of relationships and there's a whole renegotiation, both psychologically and physically. I'm Ken Greenberg and my team disrupts urban transformation.